It's cozy. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for um, the opportunity to address you this evening to, um, to share a little bit about hip housing. Just want to show of hands how many people have heard of hip housing before. Can I see your hands? Okay, not too many. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> um, and just a show of hands, how many are homeowners here in Atherton who are considering an ADU or may have an ADU? Okay, great. And then how many are representing folks who are seeking housing? Any the school district? Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, well, I'm Laura Finucchi. I'm the director of programs at HIP Housing. HIP stands for Human Investment Project. And our mission is to invest in human potential by improving the housing and lives of people here in San Mateo County. And we've been doing that for now 50 years. Rachel's going to help me with the slides. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> okay. um, our, our agency's mission is to really create a very healthy, connected, and inclusive San Mateo County. Um, the connection between safe, affordable housing and a person's well-being is of utmost importance to our organization. We want folks to feel connected to their community. We know that members of our community who work here um, sometimes they, they commute very, very long distances to work and the quality of life is diminished. So we want to be able to connect them to housing resources that help to improve their life. And we want our programs to be very inclusive, to serve a wide variety of folks at different demographics and various income levels as well. So just a, a minute or two about HIP housing. Every year we provide housing to over 1,200 individuals in our community. Um, we have our home sharing program, which I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight. We also have a self-sufficiency program for low-income families with children that we help to support the family's housing costs for a year to five years while the parents are in school. And then HIP Housing is also a property owner and manager of over 500 units of affordable housing throughout San Mateo County. And we are just in the process of launching a fourth program, which is an information and referral housing readiness program to provide more support to older adults or folks that don't have access to resources for housing to help them navigate the affordable housing landscape here in San Mateo, San Mateo County. So we know our challenges here in our community. Um, one of the biggest is that we have about 75% of our land here in San Mateo County is deemed open space. Um, we have incredible job growth here in our communities, but we do not construct enough housing to keep up with the demand. Um, we have an incredible number of percentage of folks who work here in the county, but they commute um, outside of the county. So we can't build our way out of this problem, but we are making strides in that. But home sharing and ADUs are also an, an excellent solution to help meet the housing needs of our community. So this just gives a little example of, you know, the, the, you say they're, um, to keep your housing costs affordable, they say the formula is that you're spending no more than 30% of your income on housing costs. So for example, a grocery clerk or a clerk at Starbucks might be earning about $15 an hour. Their annual income is around 29,000. They are at the poverty, extremely low income level. And in order to afford their own apartment here in San Mateo County, they would be spending about 80% of their income on housing costs. That's simply not affordable. So these are just some additional examples of folks at various income levels at the extremely low, the very low income, and then at the um, lowest income. So for example, our school administrators, maybe they're making around $45 an hour and their income's over $87,000. they are still considered low income here in San Mateo County. Um, and they would be spending about the 27% of their income on housing costs. So that is affordable for them. But for many individuals in our community, our preschool teachers, our social workers, our um, clerks at the stores, our hair salons, they, they are really struggling with their housing costs, as well as low-income seniors who are on fixed incomes. We see a rapid increase in the number of seniors who are, um, are, are really experiencing homelessness and they've been in stable housing for a long time. 
something's happened to that housing, either the landlord is selling the property or remodeling the property, and now they're being displaced. And in this housing market, that's very, very challenging for them. So we have our home sharing program, which also includes our ADUs. So we're kind of in the magic in the middle. So on one side, we have home ownership. On the other side, we have market rate apartment uh, rentals. Then there's also low income affordable housing. And then there's our home sharing program. So home sharing makes use of great use of existing housing stock. We don't need to construct rooms that are available in the homes. And then the constructions of ADUs is also a wonderfully magic solution to our housing concerns here in San Mateo County. So what is home sharing? So some of you might recognize uh, some of these familiar faces that used to share housing together, those golden girls at Three's Company. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't watched New Girls, so I'm not entirely sure what that is. But anyway, these are some of the concepts when people think about home sharing, um, you know, just kind of fun loving and everything. Um, but sometimes people think, well, home sharing, I did that in college, you know, I rented, uh, I was in my dorm and all that. Sometimes people think that home sharing can be very problematic, like, oh my gosh, I don't want that roommate, or how did that, you know, what do I do, how do I get them out, or, you know, what if they don't clean up, or all that kind of stuff. But with the support of an organization like ours, and throughout the country, the home sharing programs that are represented, um, home sharing can really be a very wonderful, rewarding experience for not only the home provider who's offering the space, um, but the renter that moves in with them. Um, so our home sharing slash ADU uh, match program, um, we call our homeowners um, home providers. So they can be homeowners and they can also be renters, but for the purposes of ADUs, they are homeowners. Um, our home seekers live, work, or attend school here in San Mateo County, or they have a housing supportive voucher to help to support their rent here in San Mateo County. Um, most of our, uh, we have, you know, matches that involve a homeowner renting space in their home. And then we have um, homeowners that have accessory dwelling units and we help them to find a tenant. So the types of matches that we help to facilitate are straight rent exchanges where the home seeker moves in and rents the unit. Um, and if a homeowner is unclear about what they want to charge for rent, we can help um, provide some feedback and guidelines on, on what might be um, an appropriate rent to charge. Um, and then we have some matches where the home seeker pays a little bit lower rent and they exchange like extra household chores for an individual who might need help with um, doing errands or maybe some yard work or you know, do, helping out with cooking or cleaning. So we have some relationships like that that we help to match up. Um, as the mayor said, we are in um, all of the uh, 21 housing elements um, throughout San Mateo County. Um, our home sharing program is listed as a resource for residents in our community to find housing. And in many of the housing elements that are um, using ADUs to help meet their regional housing goals, um, we are also listed as a resource um, in, in, the, in the housing elements. We're also funded by all of the cities here in San Mateo County. And I wanted to just give an example of uh, ADU match that we have in the town of Hillsborough. So about three years ago, we were um, approached by a homeowner in Hillsborough who, who learned about our program in a similar meeting like this. And she contacted our organization because she met a young teacher who was working for the town of Hillsborough. And the teacher was really struggling with her housing costs. Um, her rent was gonna go up. She was thinking that she might not be able to continue living here and teaching here at the school that she really loved to work at. And so they wanted to become part of our home sharing program. And so we interviewed both of them um, and I'll go through how that happens. And then we helped to um, formulate an agreement with them. And three years later, they're still matched together. The homeowner really didn't need the income to support their lifestyle, but they really wanted to give back to their community and help out a local teacher who was really um, in jeopardy of, of moving out of the area. It puts a, a tremendous strain on our education system and on the kids as well. 
And so that teacher gets to stay here and she lives here very affordably. The homeowner charged only a thousand dollars rent per month and it's a two bedroom unit, it's absolutely beautiful. And we check in with them to see how things are going and they're just really, really happy to be together. And the home provider and her husband have somebody who's on their property for when they go away, they know that their home and their property is safe. So that's one of the examples. We have two matches in Hillsborough like that. So how do we, how do we make all this happen? Uh, so um, if, if homeowners or home seekers are interested in our program, they contact our organization. That's the first step. Um, what we do then is schedule an inter interview um, for the home provider. We can do a home visit. We can come out and see, see the home, see the space that's being offered. Um, for our home seekers, we've been interviewing them um, virtually or they can come to our office. We do ask the clients provide us with um, a proof of their ID, uh, three character references, and for our home seekers, we ask for uh, proof of their income. Um, for all of our applicants to our program, we do screening. So we run a, a San Mateo County background search and a national sex offender database check. Um, and then our, what happens after the interview is that each client gets to work with one of our home sharing coordinators. And that's the individual they keep in touch with to, um, to hear about potential uh, tenants for their unit. So what we do is we have, um, a, we have a database that helps us to kind of narrow the search. And it's usually based on what the home provider is charging, um, what, the, what the unit has available. Is it a separate entrance, private bath? Will they accept a smoker, pets? You know, all those kinds of criteria. And then the home seekers profile is kind of the same. So our database helps to kind of narrow the search. And then um, what our home sharing coordinators do is tell the clients about each other and um, then they can you know, make an arrangement to meet each other. For some people, they haven't done this before. So we have a resource guide that um, goes through questions like when you're first making that phone call to a, protect, a potential um, tenant, and then when you meet in person, what are some of the other questions, you know, that, that we feel are important to go through when you're um, interviewing, a, you know, protect, uh, prospective tenant. And um, we also provide resources on how to check references. So we ask our home seekers for a, a reference that can relate to like their housing, so maybe their current landlord or their housemate. Um, one for their employment and then a personal reference. So we have kind of a checklist of information that we want our home providers to go over when they're checking references. We also have like an inventory checklist. So when the tenant moves in, there's like a walkthrough of the unit to kind of record the condition of the unit of how it looks so that you have something to compare it to when the tenant moves out. Um, so there's a, rec there's a record of that. Um, and then when, you know, clients really make their own decision about who they want to share with or who they want to rent the ADU to, and we help to fill out a written agreement that puts everything in place. Um, what's nice about that after that is that we maintain contact with all of our matches, both the home provider and the home seeker, every three months to check in and see how the match is going. So most of our home sharing matches last on average about four and a half years. Um, but we have some matches that last 30 days and we have some matches that last 30 years and we have some matches that ended up getting married. Okay. <laughs> so these are the clients who um, participate in our program. So we have a wide range of clients who are either employed, they're on fixed incomes, or they are in transition with their jobs. Um, we, we do a lot of community outreach. And so we um, we do community outreach to the faith-based communities, to school districts, to homeowners associations, to other nonprofits in our community. We're really seen as a resource for folks that are having housing challenges, both on the provider and the seeker side. So for benefits to our community, for our home seekers, uh, you know, living here in our community, if we're able to provide them with affordable housing, it helps to keep their housing costs low. They have less financial worry. We, we've been seeing an incredible amount of um, low-income seniors with, with a lot of credit card debt because they have had to use 
their savings and their um, retirement benefits to pay for motels or staying in housing because they can't afford to live here. So we want to be able to provide, you know, that kind of support to them. For our employees who work here in our community, we want them to stay local. For local teachers that have to commute long distances to work, they don't become part of the fabric of our community. We want them to be local. We want our employees to not have to travel long distances to, to, you know, to their jobs. We want them to be part of our community and to have a place to call home. For home providers, many of our home providers, you know, they do need some extra income at times. You know, they have expensive utility costs. We've been hearing a lot of that, about that from our home providers, just the rising rates of utilities um, and just life expenses in general. Having, extra, having an extra person on the property in the home helps to have extra security. We have many older adults that are living by themselves and they, their families may not be close by. And so they, they appreciate having somebody to, to be with them, to be a presence on the property, to make them feel safe. And it's putting empty space to good use. You know, we want to be able to, you know, we're not, we're not gonna solve the, the housing, affordable housing crisis if we don't all participate. And, you know, even though you may not think it affects me personally, it does affect people that you know, and maybe people that you don't know, but it's still the fabric of our community that we need to do something. At, we wanna make our San Mateo County a great place to call home. Um, okay. And if you are interested, we happen to have a little incentive to entice you. <laughs> so the County of San Mateo has um, recognized that, you know, home sharing is one way really to, to address the needs here in our community. So we do have some funding to um, provide a small incentive to our home providers that decide to register with our program. So for a home provider who matches with one of our housemates, 90 days after the housemate moves in, we have a small $250 matching incentive. If the rent is kept at 1100 or below, we have an additional incentive. And if a home provider refers another home provider to the program, we also have an incentive for, for that provider. Um, so how do you contact us? So this is our phone number, 348-6660. Um, we have uh, our, our website, hiphousing.org. We have an inquiry form that um, folks can fill out. Um, I actually receive the inquiry forms. And so what I do then is um, send information and then we contact either the home provider or the home seeker to schedule an interview. Um, and then uh, we also have our agency's email mailbox at hiphousing.org. But honestly, just give us a call. We, oh, we answer the phone. We absolutely answer the phone. And so we're very proud of that. And that is the gist of my presentation this evening. Thank you so much for your attention. I saw a lot of nodding heads, so I hope some of it resonated with you. And um, we look forward to your participation or answering any questions that you have. Thank you. Oh, do you want, you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, we're going to share the slides and the recording as well. And do you want to ask any questions? I can do a few questions. Okay, hi. <laughs> Two very quick questions for you. Thank you for the presentation. It was excellent. Um, is this exclusive to San Mateo County? I can't remember what you said up front. So HIP housing is. Um, HIP housing is exclusive to San Mateo County. But actually in California, there's the largest numbers of home sharing programs run by nonprofits in the country. We have about 20, 27 um, nonprofit organizations operating home sharing programs in California. So locally, there's one in San Francisco, Marin, um, Napa, Sonoma, and then in the East Bay. Unfortunately, the program in Santa Clara County had to close, um, but there's one in Santa Cruz, and then there's several down south as well. Thank you. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. The other part of the question was, it seemed obvious that everyone was an individual. Mm -hmm. Do you do couples? We or? do. Uh, that's a very good question. Yes. So for our home sharing program, um, because usually our home providers may have just like one room for rent or one unit for rent, we usually limit the program to one or two persons on the home seeker side. So, um, so that's uh, kind of the demographic that we're looking for there. 
if we have families that are larger sized families, um, we might be able to um, match them in our self-sufficiency program for families with children or to talk with them about our property um, interest list and, and seeing if that's a match for them too. Yes, we're a nonprofit. We, yes, uh -huh. we have, we're, HIP Housing is a nonprofit organization and we're funded by the communities here in San Mateo County and also um, from private foundations and grants, individual contributions, and also the earned income from the property side of the work that we do helps to come back to support our social service program. So it's a sustainable source of funding for the agency. And there's no, there's no fee to participate in any of our programs on the home provider or the home seeker side. That I don't know. <laughs> so that, that's that's that you're gonna get there. I think <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of options for for building. I know that because actually, hip housing is in the process of um, submitting plans to the city of San Carlos. Um, we have a six bedroom, three bath home there for our single parent um, self sufficiency program, um, but the but the lot is very large. So our my director and I have been thinking, God, you know, we we really need to get an ADU on that property. So we had an architect um, who volunteered uh, her time to work with the planning department. So we're in the process of. Um, working with another nonprofit that has um, pre-designed ADUs and to put a, a two-bedroom ADU on that property, which would be home for another single parent family. So we're really excited about that. Hello, I'm Gabby. Hi. Um, I've been lucky to have been living in Atherton the last four years, uh, very low cost rent because the owner wanted not to be, it was a couple mm -hmm. by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I have two other housemates. Oh, nice. um, I'm closer to retirement now. Mm -hmm. And what I was, what I'm interested in is to buy a tiny house. Oh, mm -hmm. And I was at an exhibit last year. Mm -hmm. And it seems more and more they're like properties where they will offer a power outlet and a sewage, like a connection. Mm -hmm. And a renter can bring the tiny house. And uh, so I'm wondering, are you con considering versus a fixed ADU, you know, dwelling? Uh, are you considering to recommend to owners maybe just do that? And I know like traveling nurses and teachers, that are interested mm -hmm. in, in such an opportunity to be close to their work. Right. I mean, we, we haven't dived into the tiny home um, opportunities. I mean, we usually homeowners come to us with their ideas and what they want to offer in their space. Um, one of the other nonprofit organizations in San Luis Obispo that operates a home sharing program similar to ours is starting a tiny home community. So they have really expanded their thinking about um, like independent living design and then combining it with community to set up kind of a little village um, network. So, so there's always possibilities like that. We don't have a lot of, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of uh, a talk about tiny homes as being a, a really great solution. There will be an opportunity for a breakout session <laughs> with HIP housing specifically. Um, thank you. Thank Answering you further much. questions thank there. You. I neglected to share that our organization that was going to discuss how to build an ADU had to call out sick for this meeting. So I was going to share um, their flyer. It's the one with the green boxes. Um, they have a toolkit with like eight free designs that homeowners can access and it's packaged up for easy kind of plan check and, and all of that. Um, so Heart of San Mateo County might be another resource if you're interested in building. We also have um, two local builders here, Bob Flurry of Flurry Bryant Construction um, and Carrie Diller and Jill Woodward of Inspired ADUs. 
and they'll be a part of our, our breakout session, which we're um, going to head into after we hear from our town planner, just to um, get a little bit more information for folks who are interested in building. Sung is gonna be the person you start with. And so we thought we'd um, get some information about how to build from, from our town planner tonight. Hi, Sung Kwon, town planner. Um, just wanted to give a little bit of information in terms of the financials. So I have a couple of slides here for you all. Uh, the first one is the San Mateo County income limits for 2022. And so you can see what, what incomes count as extremely low, low, um, very low and moderate. Um, if you go back to um, one of the previous slides, You can see, you can see the that a hairstylist um, typical income is thirty nine thousand, which would qualify for very low. Oh, <laughs> too far. <laughs> there you go. So, as extremely low income for a single person. So, if you're preparing a JADU, for example, it's a studio apartment. Um, you would be able to. Um, house a hairstylist and they would be able to actually afford the rent. Um, the moderate income goes up and also the, to 139,000 and that's um, 120% of median income. And then the income limits go up by household size. And so what does that mean for ADUs? Go to the next slide. So these are the typical rents to um, qualify for the various income categories by the different ADU types. Um, so for a JADU, for a single person at a very low income category, the max rent would be uh, $1,631. For a one-bedroom ADU um, in the low income category, um, the rent would be $2,610. And then it just kind of goes up um, from there. The town allows for two-bedroom ADUs, and we have been seeing some of those being built. So um, if you'd like to build a Two bedroom, uh, two bedroom ADU, please feel free. Um, we are going through the process of updating our ADU ordinance. Um, so that will be um, looked at by the planning commission and the city council. And we'll be updating it um, based on state law and some of the things that are happening as part of the housing element. Um, if you have any questions or wanna talk about any kind of ADU designs, please come see me or my staff. Thank you. Oh, a JADU is a junior ADU. Basically, it's um, up to 500 square feet, and it's fully enclosed within, um, within the house, whereas other ADUs are either attached or detached. Um, if there's any questions about ADUs. General question. Yes. Um, yeah, th there are people that will um, have it for in-laws and so forth. I mean, you don't necessarily have to rent it out, but the purpose of the ADU is to rent it out um, to a family. No. 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 It, I want us to have a program to rent. The, the state is counting what we build. However, they also will be tracking how many we rent because we have to report that every year as to how many have been our low income. So if you build one and no one's in it, then then obviously you're high income. And so, you know, that doesn't count, you know. So, um, so that's, yeah. For us to get credit in the, in the areas that we have up there, the low income area, the very low and the low income, uh, and even the moderate income, you know, if we have those people renting them, then we want to know about it. And if you have a bedroom or you have, if you're renting anything right today, we want to know about it. it. Please let us know about it. Who's staying there? We can count it. So that's what's important. So um, yes, please, you know, please consider building, but 
If you do rent it, also please let us know that. If you go through HIP housing, the, the obviously they'll let us know that. So, but they do a great job. Thanks. Uh, there yeah. was another question over here. I have a mic over here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. The question was, um, when is the new ordinance expected to be out so we can know what the rules are? I'll let George answer that. He puts our calendar on. Yeah, you can. Um, so we're happy. We're um, planning to have a study session in uh, May, and then it'll go to Planning Commission and then City Council shortly thereafter. You had a question? I actually have two questions. So um, if we rent our rooms to our grown up or almost grown up kids, do you want to know too? Well, if it's, is it in this, a separated area? Is it a, a no. ADU? Oh, it has to be an ADU, right? Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Yeah. Unless the house is cut and it's a J with a separate entrance and they have a kitchen to themselves and a bathroom to themselves. That's what a J means. And if you have one of those and you have family members, then yeah, let us know. We okay. Know, we should know because you've done the planning with us. So the second question is that have you uh, thought about the solar panel business model? Like for example, uh, for, uh, I have land, but I, I'm not like uh, ready to build an ADU myself because we don't really have the needs. Uh, however, if the town wants to use the land that I own and build an ADU and rent it to whoever needs it, uh, we might be open you know, for that, and uh, the rent income can go back to the town or to the program. Have you ever thought about that? No, I haven't thought about building, we haven't thought about building ADUs on other people's properties and letting them have it, and then they can go do something with it. So we have not done that, but we'll always look into things. We're always interested in things. You had a question? Where is the city planning on potentially putting second story ADUs on current garages? That was a discussion point prior to the holidays. Uh, so that's something that has been addressed in the housing element. Um, the council has decided to pursue that. So we'll go through um, as we're going through the ordinance on how to best do that. Uh, one of the things that people have brought up is not just garages, but also carports. So We'll, we'll have that discussion as part of the study session, and then it will go through Planning Commission Council. I have sort of an administrative question. So once you build your ADU, it's all functional. It would be nice if people could get their deliveries, at, like whether it's DoorDash or their mail, to their own address. Is it possible to have your address like A and B? Will that be possible? Yes. Yes, that's ideally the way it's supposed to be done. And it would be and easy it would to just, zone. Yeah, so you would just go to the building department um, and then get a address change. And the post office. And the post and the, office. I think, I think building will take care of. And the building. Yeah. You want me to answer that? Yes. Um, hi, I'm Daniel Johnston. I work with the building department. Um, uh, the typical policy is for any constructed ADU or converted ADU to include uh, as part of the issuance permit issuance process, a address, and it'll be a sub address underneath your main address. And so your address would be just your normal address. This is 80 Fair Oaks. And if we had a uh, ADU on this address, it'd be 80A Fair Oaks. And uh, when you submit that aperture change to the building department, we actually route it out to the county, uh, PG&E, the post office, everybody for you. So you only have to submit the application to us as part of your permit issuance. And then we will connect it to all of the other people. It does take quite a bit of time because you're dealing with so many other organizations, but eventually they will get a sub address. Technically speaking, it is not required. It is a policy of ours that we ask you to get a sub address for that exact reason that is much more convenient 
and it uh, really helps the emergency services to go to their door and kick it in instead of your door to kick it in. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that is exactly what it is. And then for the, AD, the JADUs, we typically put those as the Bs and then the main as the A, and then your house is just the number and your street address. I have a uh, related question. Can you have the unit separately metered for all utilities? For a mountain, but not quite as a uh, For new houses with new ADUs, you will be required to have separate utilities. Mm -hmm. Any others? Move on to the next one. Oh, thank you. Uh, question for Mr. Mayor. You know that a 1,200 square foot uh, ADU, two bedroom, is going to cost around $500,000. Okay, I'm just giving average. 10% yeah. of it is the cost of permitting, means around $50,000. Now, whether the town can arrange some of these plans, one bedroom, two bedroom, you know that is acceptable and meet the requirements to be prepared by the town and give it to us. You know, may not cost you much, but gives us, a, save us a lots of money. Is it possible? Let's give you an example, a city of San Diego. Yeah. So before you jump on that, you wanna have the building department talk about the fees for a second. Okay. So the fees aren't all of $50,000, of course, but you may be talking about the costs of getting an architect and the engineering and all that. Once you combine maybe PG&E as well for their separate connection. Yeah, those things definitely all add up. Um, building department fees approximately for an ADU, depending on the size, depending on many different things, the valuations that you tell us. Um, it can vary, but it's usually nowhere near 50000 maybe five thousand permitting fees um <clears throat> there is a plan check fee and a permit fee and there's a couple other odds and ends that get into it fifty thousand is a bit high you usually only see those numbers on main residences and very extensive main residences the adus are much much smaller um, but you're totally right that there's uh, extraneous fees that get associated with it from the other departments and uh, and other organizations, utilities and such that. Um, as for what you were saying about um, pre-made pre -made, uh, yeah, pre homes, plans and things like that. Now we haven't brought it in, but that was part of our presentation, right? That we are looking into. Yeah, we've discussed that several times at the county. We haven't moved forward on that, but that's still a discussion with the, with the town council, but it has been has been raised. So at the moment, we have no pre-approved ADU layouts, but we're looking into that. With the state requirement for solar, how does that work on an ADU? They can tie it into, if you have, if you have existing solar on the house, can you tie that into that? Or is it going to be a separate one under the new plan that's going to be basically for ADU, not cost effective? So the solar requirement in uh, the building code, uh, specifically, I think it's under the energy code, it says that every separate building, residential building, shall be equipped with a PV system of some specific size. Um, our interpretation, building department's interpretation at this time, does allow for that solar system to be placed on a different structure or ground mounted on the property. Now, if you had a property that had sufficient PV on the main residence to provide for the main residence and the ADU. That's an interpretation that we could entertain. At the moment, we're only doing that for full new constructed sites. Obviously, this discussion is about just the ADUs added onto your properties. Being constructed at the same time, and they just put all the solar on the main residence or on a maybe a, a trellis off to the side, and they put all the solar over there so that they have beautiful roof lines and things like that. Um, we allow for that as long as the structures that require PV have the PV that is required. There's a bunch of exceptions that minimize the ADU or the, the PV, the photovoltaic, the solar systems. Uh, the building code requires that all new structures have solar electric systems on them. Um, uh, but they don't fully eliminate it, but you can get pretty small. 
I think it's like a one kilowatt or something like that. Pretty small. Kilowatt per hour, I think it is. is it's a fraction of the square footage of the structure to be constructed. And it's a, there's a formula in the code. Building department can show it to you, discuss it with you. I have all my cards here. You can shoot me an email. I'll respond right back with what the formula is and all the exceptions. I'll just give you the whole code section. You can look at it and interpret it. Uh, so having announced tonight that you're in the process of developing a new building code for ADUs, does that mean you're going to freeze all the applications until you're finished or you're going to do a rolling? Uh, no. Otherwise, you're going to no. we're, your... we're, we're updating the zoning ordinance, but um, applicants are free to submit applications. We'll review them. So a lot of the cities that are requiring us to build everything with electric now, and they're not allowing gas. Would you allow gas in the ADUs, or do we have to build them with all 100? I can see they change. All electric, huh? <laughs> so the rules as they've been written uh, or recently adopted uh, as of the first of this year do say that all new constructed structures shall be uh, all electric buildings. I believe there is an exception for altered structures. I believe that's how we are uh, interpreting it, that even a conversion of a structure into an ADU does not make it a all electric building as of this time, but newly constructed structures from the ground up, if you and I both don't agree that this is a uh, addition alteration or just a regular alteration or conversion, uh, those structures, the ones that are new, must be all electric. Uh, but the um, altered ones can maintain or uh, I think even be added, uh, how the rules were written, uh, have gas. There is um, two other exceptions that go along with that. There's uh, fire pits can still happen and, and uh, generators. You can still have your generator, uh, but almost everything else is uh, banned natural gas wise. Uh, Absolutely correct. They call it the REACH code. It's under the Green Building Code and our municipal regulations. If you want to look at I think we can do one more question and then we'll go to break it. Or maybe the, who has questions? Yeah, you could do one and then we have one more right there and then we'll go into our. <laughs> what about TPZs? That's a big bugaboo trying to get around to the perimeter of the property. Yeah, so 800 square feet are exempt from the tree ordinance. No, no, that's setback. Mm -hmm. Yes, so 800 square feet are exempt from tree protection. So 1,200 square foot is not? Uh, not at this time. Not at this time. The, the, state, the state law, the 800 square foot minimum, we cannot have any local ordinance get in the way of that ADU. If you build an ADU bigger than 800 square feet, local rules will apply. Where was that last question? Mm -hmm. I might have just answered my question, but, but I couldn't hear your answer. So we've wanted to do an ADU for the last several years, but there's a heritage tree smack in the middle of where we wanted to put it. So would are you changing the code about heritage trees at all? Uh, so for, for now, uh, 800 square feet, are you, the tree ordinance doesn't apply. Um, as we go through um, the ordinance change, that's something that the Planning Commission and Council could consider. But it so again, it's changed. just the, the 800 square feet or less because state law overrides the local rules with respect to that. That one we're still talking to the city attorney through just to be sure, but our the way the state law reads right now, that, that answer is you can remove the tree. So we're kind of, we're trying to clarify that one because we are a big heritage tree protection community. So, so Rachel, where did you want to go next? Thank you, Son. Thank you, Mayor.
All right, so now we have the chance to kind of dig into the weeds with everyone. I'm gonna share where our different breakout groups are and it's really unstructured um, to have conversation and you're welcome to move around between the groups. Um, so we'll have our first group, which is gonna be our um, builder group. Um, they're the folks that can help you understand how much it costs and what, what all the next steps are if you're looking to build. And that's gonna be two of our local builders, um, Bob Flurry and then inspired ADUs with Carrie and Jill. And they'll be right in this back corner. Um, and I think they have- Careful, if you wanna go there, you can it. as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, if there's any other builders who are here, you're welcome to join that group. Um, and then our group two will be understanding our city and town processes here. Um, and we'll put you all up here by the dais. Um, so if you wanna talk to our um, city manager, our um, building department, our planning department, or even our code enforcement officer who's here, um, you're welcome to join them at the front of the room. And then towards the back, um, we'll have HIP housing. If you have an ADU already um, and you're looking to rent or you're a home seeker and you wanna see if there's a, a solution with um, HIP's ADU match program. So we'll have our builders, town staff, and um, HIP housing. Actually, let's... Oh yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Carrie. Uh -huh. Oh, well, thank you, George. Um, so I'm Carrie Shores Diller with uh, Inspired ADUs. And so we are an architecture firm that started building ADUs in 2007 and eight. We were really focused on the multi-generational model of helping people stay in their homes that maybe had too many steps. They didn't wanna leave their neighborhood, their tax income bracket, their friends and but they realized their house wouldn't necessarily support them uh, in aging in place. Then we realized how much people love talking about aging in place. And we stopped talking about that part uh, until COVID came around and people all of a sudden were very proactive about taking control of their future, making sure they had a beautiful indoor outdoor living space. So our office offers um, custom architecture, but we've been built over more than 200 ADUs. So we have put plans that are living well for people into a catalog. So you can go more efficiently. You can start with a design that's already living well for someone, working well, and has been permitted in the Bay Area. And then if you wanna modify that, you can. We also have a series of modular lines that we can do in your backyard that can be configured in different shapes and orientations. And then we'll be launching a panelized product, uh, which hopefully will bring down more of the cost on ADUs, but have more limited options in terms of what you can do. So that's just a bit about who we are and Jill and I are here. And I know Bob is here as well, so. I'm Bob Fleury with Fleury Bryant Design Group. I'd like to clarify one thing. We're a design firm, we're not contractors. We don't build. So we'll do the plans for you and we take it all the way through the approval process and all that, but we, we don't build. <laughs> um, been working in Atherton for 43 years. And in that time, we've done over 200 projects in Atherton. Uh, some of those were ADUs, but most of them were remodels and new homes. So been been around here for a long time. <laughs> so that's really it. Yeah, we 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 do we do custom stuff. You know, we don't we don't have any standard models that we we generate. Everyone is different, and it's it's designed specifically for that property and for that homeowner. So that's pretty much the summary. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Carrie. They'll be in this back corner here, and I think they have some plans and posters and cool stuff to look at. So they'll be there. We'll have town staff here, and then we'll have HIP in this back corner. And then help yourself to refreshments too, and, and feel free to mingle with each other. Thanks again for coming.